CCTV Camera World is proud to provide support for products purchased from our website. If you purchased your product from another vendor, please contact the vendor you purchased from for further assistance. In this video, I'm going to show you how to live view your security cameras and some of the live view features of the security camera inks and VR systems. So first, I'm going to right click or bring my mouse down to the bottom of my NVR and I can see there are various layout options. This is a 16 channel NVR, so the largest layout is a 16 camera grid. If I wanted to bring these cameras into a larger four camera grid view, I would choose the layout four option. It's gonna ask me to log in, so please note you do need to be logged in to change the live view options. Here is the first four cameras. And then if I click the layout four option again, it's going to cycle to the next four cameras. And here I see I only have six cameras added, so I can only see two cameras at the top, channel five and channel six. Now the SendVR is intelligent. If you cycle back through another four camera grid view, it's not going to take you to the empty grids. It's going to take you back to the occupied four camera grid view for channels one through four. Some other layout options include a nine camera layout, a 12 camera layout, I already showed you the 16 camera layout, and then there's more layout options in here. Various layout options include 6, 8, 10, another 10 camera grid view, layout 13, another 13 camera grid layout, and then layout 14. Another thing to note is in the any of these grid views, if you select a channel and move it, it's going to move that camera on each of the individual layouts. So for example, I took channel one and put it into channel 16. So any of these grids that I go to that don't have 16 cameras, I won't see channel one at all. So there's no channel one present. There's channel two, three, four, five, and six, but no channel one. So I would need to change my grid view back to 16 cameras and then drag camera one back into one of the compatible views. So now if I go back into more layouts, 14 camera, then channel one is back in its rightful place. So it is worth noting that you do need to make sure that you don't leave any cameras outside of these the layout if you want that camera to show in that layout. So you can customize your views by dragging these cameras anywhere on the grid screen. So the next feature is auto sequence. What auto sequence does is selects a camera and then sequences through those cameras in five second intervals. So I'm going to click the auto sequence button. It pulled up channel one and then the remaining time shows me that it will switch channels. It switched to channel two within five seconds. It will switch to channel three, so on and so forth. To exit out of the auto sequence, you do need to right click on your mouse. If you want to adjust the sequence to change it from one camera or change the timer, then you can do that by going to the system settings. And I'll show you how to do that. So you hover your mouse to the bottom, you click the menu icon, then go to the setup option, click that. It's going to bring up the main menu. And then these settings for the sequence are found under system and then general. So you can either click system and go to the general tab or just click right on the general option. So inside of the general settings page, there's going to be a tab at the top called output configuration. And you'll need to click that to get to the sequence settings. So here we have the sequence mode. This is going to choose how many cameras to display when you choose the sequence. So you can customize it as you see fit. And then you can choose the sequence dwell time. In other words, this is how long the system will stay on that sequence of cameras or that single camera before moving on to the next sequence. So this is where you adjust those sequence settings. Next is the playback option. So I could select a channel and then instantly get taken to the playback screen by clicking this button or clicking the carrot icon and choosing a duration. So that's gonna take me back in time and allow me to watch the video from the channel that I have selected. So you do need to select a channel, then come down here and click the playback option. I'll cover this in more detail in the playback video. Next is the audio out. So this is actually the audio out from your HDMI port on your NVR to your television or your monitor. So if I wanted to listen to the audio from my cameras, now keep in mind you do need to have cameras that have audio to get audio to your NVR and then audio from your NVR to your monitor or television. 
So I do happen to have a couple of cameras with audio, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this audio on. And now you should hear some form of echo because the NVR and cameras are actually picking up my audio as I'm recording it and then bringing it into the NVR and then sending it through my speakers or my HDMI port on the NVR. So I don't want that echo, so I am going to go ahead and turn that back off. Next is the switch stream option, which this is going to do is attempt to switch all of the streams from substream to mainstream. However, when I do that, it will say resource not enough because the mainstream is a super high resolution stream and the NVR is unable to display that many large resolution pictures. So these are 4K cameras. It's unable to display a large number of 4K videos all at the same time because those 4K videos are so large and are so detailed. So you'll notice when I did that, I actually made the, the video a little bit sharper and a little bit brighter because that is the full resolution view. So in order to get all of my cameras back, I need to switch it back to the substream. Now what you can do is individually switch cameras to that view by clicking on them and then clicking the switch stream button. Some of these layouts will automatically switch this large grid option to the high definition view. So if you wanted to come here, you'll see that it did switch it to HD. And if I wanted any of my other cameras to be in HD, I could drag them in here and it will automatically switch it to HD but I'm gonna put channel one back in this section and then go back to my 16 camera grid view. Next would be the stretch switch. What this is doing is actually stretching the image to the full grid that the camera has available to it. So if I were to change this to original, you'll see that it actually cuts off the image and this would be the original aspect ratio of the video. However, I wanna stretch it to my grid, so I'm gonna choose the stretch grid option. Next is the preview policy. Now this is gonna be the real time, balanced or smooth options. Now these are not really consequential. Essentially, if you wanted smoother, higher frame rates, then you would choose the smooth option. If you're more concerned about receiving video as it's coming into the camera, you know, more uh, real time, then you would choose the real time option. What that's gonna do is reduce the smoothness of your video, but allow you to get the video a little bit sooner you know, a fraction of a second sooner than if you had it on the balanced or smooth option. I'm going to leave it on the balanced option. And then there is preview a restore. So you could restore a preview that you've set up. And then last but not least, each of the cameras as you select them in a live grid view offer several options themselves. So the options depend on what the camera itself supports. So this camera happens to be a PTZ camera, so it has a PTZ function here. This camera, channel 5, is not a PTZ camera, so there is no PTZ function available. I'm going to go over some of these functions right now. I'll cover the PTZ function in another video. So on this camera, I have a manual record option. If I click this, what it's going to do is start manually recording a clip from this camera. So if I click it, it's gonna start recording and turn red. If I click it again, it's gonna go back to blue because I have it hovered. And that just means it saved that short second clip on my NVR for later review or exporting. So this is useful if you're, you're watching your cameras and you see something that you wanna record for sure, then you can click that record option. Same thing for the manual capture option. Instead of video though, it is just a still image. So you could capture a still image if you want to capture something that's happening in front of your cameras. Instant playback, that's similar to the playback function on the menu at the bottom of my NVR, and that would take me to the playback screen for this channel. Next is the digital zoom option. What this is gonna do is bring the camera into full screen view, and then I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse, and you'll notice the, red, the gray rectangle here actually indicates what I'm doing on my camera. So if I wanted to move it around here, I could, or I can click and drag my mouse here. And again, I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom in and out on my mouse. So if I scroll in, you'll notice it starts to get a little bit pixelated. What this is doing is taking the image and stretching it using digital zoom to try and get better detail at a distance. So I can see four leaves here, but as I scroll out, it's gonna get a little clearer until I'm fully zoomed out. So that is the digital zoom function. To get out of this screen, I need to right click and then go back to my 16 camera grid view. 
So on the same camera, the next one is the color settings. What this is gonna allow you to do is manually change the color settings and it brings it into full screen so you can change, see the changes that you're making. So brightness is 131. I'm gonna pump it all the way up to 255 and it makes this screen much brighter. So I can bring it back down to 131. And you'll note that as you're making the changes, you'll see them actually change on your view. That is why it brings the camera into full screen view. So I'm gonna click save. It's going to save those and then I can click cancel to get out of here and then go back to my 16 camera grid view. The last option is stream switch. We already discussed that. And then you can add a customized tag for a given time period. Now this should tag this event in your playback screen. I'm going to click cancel. If I had any AI functions enabled on this camera and wanted to see some stats about those AI functions, I could click the AI button. The last great live view feature is available by hovering your mouse over to the right hand side. And then by default, this menu is visible, but I turned it off for my video and I'm going to turn it back on just to show what is available using the screen at the right hand side. So it shows you the events, whether it's motion detection or intelligent video on the right hand side here. So you can see each motion detection event that was recorded while I was making my video. And if I click the playback icon, it's going to actually take me to the playback screen for that event. So we can see this van is what triggered the event. If I click the X button, this menu will be visible. So if you don't want it to be visible, you can click the eyeball icon. Or if you want to see it all the time, then you click the pin icon and it's actually going to adjust your grid screen to fit uh, this event recording window on your live view screen. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.